Hi there, this is Matthew with Marble Gems. Um, recently I acquired an old Singer sewing machine that was made in 1948. It's a Singer Model 15-91. And the fellow that gave it to me had a request, and that was that I make a hat for him. So I sent him a couple different pictures of, of what kind of hats I'm making, and he picked out a, not a quilted, but a, a patchwork uh, flat cap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put the patchwork part together. Let me show you what I have. So as I've been cutting out patterns for hats I, from my old coats, I save all of these little scraps and then I cut a three inch square. And then I put a quarter inch seam on, the, on there when I sew them together and end up with a two and a half inch patch. And it just works out really nicely for making these light caps. So I have seven different uh, colors to choose from. I have a lot of this and a lot of this and a lot of this and a little bit of these and so it'll, it'll work in there really nicely. So I'm going to lay them out in a pattern and then I'll pick them up and, uh, and sew them up. And this is the machine I'm going to be sewing them up on. I'm going to sew the entire hat, everything uh, from beginning to end on this old Singer Model 1591. So I'll get I'll get started on this and lay this pattern out. Okay, so far this is what I've got. Um, I've got the, some of the patches sewn up. I just had my my phone this morning, but this afternoon I'll get my camera set up so you can see this machine in action. Okay, so I'm going to continue to put these um, patchwork pieces together and sew them up. They're sewing up really nicely on the old Singer. One of the things I do with these patchworks is I like to get the seams matched up as best as possible and to do that um, the edges will be cut away but I'm more concerned about the seams and so if there's one that's kind of mismatched like that I'll get the seam matched up and this, this seam allowance so the edge is matched up and pin those to begin with. I could sew over those pins, but I'm not going to. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to iron it. Be back. Okay, after I quilted the top, or not quilted, but patched it all together, I cut it out. 
So I have that cut out. I have an interfacing that I'm going to put on the in the underside or the back side of that that patchwork top. I have a piece of fleece that I'm going to put um, on the liner. I have the bill pieces cut out. I'm going to use two different colors for that. That'll look really neat and, and really go with the theme of a patchwork hat. I have the crowns cut out. Now one of the things I did with the crowns is I cut them out from a piece of the coat that already had interfacing sewn onto it and that will give it um, more support. It doesn't keep it from stretching, it just gives it more support and and um, density, you know, it makes it thicker. So I have two of those, they're the same. And one, it matches one side of the bill. Um, I have a piece cut out for the headband and I've already taken and, and um, ironed on the fusible interfacing and that keeps it from stretching. You don't want your headband to stretch. So there's a little bit of stretch, but not very much, maybe like an eighth of an inch for each foot. So that's good and I'll sew that up and then turn it inside out. And then I've got, um, I found some fabric at the secondhand store and um, it's really nice black. Uh, I polyester, it's pretty heavy duty. Pretty th not too heavy duty, it's not too light. That's what I'm going to make the liner out of. And um, when I put the liner together, I'm going to put this top on there. And I made it a little bit smaller, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around there and then I'm going to um, put a two inch quilted pattern on this. And I might do something cool where I do it diagonal. I think that'll look cool where it has diamonds on the inside. So, uh, Let's see. Um, let's just start assembling it and putting it together. So I'm going to begin my assembly by putting this interfacing on the patchwork part. And I've pressed and ironed this all down because after I put the interfacing on there, and this is just a piece of a sheet, and it's really durable and doesn't have really any stretch except for along the 45. So it'll 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 make it'll really stabilize this top, and then when I get it sewn on, I'm going to put a top stitch on every one of these, and it looks really good, and it'll make it really strong and durable. This top will never come apart. Okay, I have that all pinned on there and lined up. When I go around the edge here, I'm just going to put like a um, a quarter inch. Um, or an eighth of an inch so that when I put the three eighths inch um, seam and sew everything together, it's not going to show. I'll use a really long stitch so that it goes fast. I'm going to adjust the stitch length. It's just right here. It's just a little dial. And you loosen it up. Yeah. Push this up and you adjust this stitch length and it just kind of stops there. I'll make it long. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a top stitch on this, on all of the seams.
Now what's interesting is I did this top stitch on my faff and it had problems going over these thicker seams right here and it's using the same fabric and this has not had one sim it hasn't had any problems at all going over those thick seams it just sews through them like their regular old fabric not even that many layers it just goes from really nice A little puckering. Okay, I got all the top stitching done on that and it was beautiful. It really turned out nice. I like the way that this is so. It's the only problem I'm having is I have this um, polyester that's um, really loose polyester and it doesn't like to stay in all the thread controls. Okay, next I'm going to put this crown together, get it lined up. My son's been doing some quilting on this already. And so we have a piece of tape here that has our 3H seam. So I'll just line that up with that and I'll put the 3H seam I want on there. Okay, and then I'm going to put a top stitch on this. Okay, the next thing I'm going to sew up is this back dart here, right here. And it's important when, you, when you're doing this, it, you kind of end up going up a lot farther than you think, but you're going 3 8 inch up here. And so you need to keep that and come up here and taper it off so it ends up coming way up here like an inch away from where you've cut it. But that makes it so it doesn't have too much of a pucker in the back. Sew that up. And that will give me a 23 inch um, head size. I'm going to shorten up the stitch a little bit on this. About Alright, beautiful. Super nice, strong stitch. really nice. Now I'm not going to put a top stitch on here yet. I'm going to wait until I, I get the crown sewn on because if I need to come back here and unpick it for some reason or take up a little bit more to get my head size right, I can do that. And the same thing with this. When I sew this piece on there, I won't put a top stitch on there until I've measured it and two or three times to make sure I'm getting it right. So the next thing I need to do is Put the side piece on there so i'm gonna uh, i'll come back after i pin that up it's all pinned up now one of the things i've learned is that you put the the top on the bottom 
and where you're going to be sewing it up where this this comes up you want this on the top if you put it on the bottom you really struggle because you end up sewing and making little pleats in there if you're not careful sometimes I do anyways but I found that this is the best way so I got my 3 8 seam allowance we'll continue on here That stitch in and just take my time to go around. I'm going to sew over some of these pins. Some of them I'll take out. Some of them I may end up sewing over. But for the most part, this just goes right over the seams, really well it just gobbles up those big thick seams without any problem i'm using a size 16 needle in here and it's a i think it's a schmeitz denim needle or no it's a ballpoint i think so it, it has a little bit better penetrating with this coarse fabric a jersey needle It's a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad. And I'm just going to go over those needles. Go slow. But if you go slow and everything manipulated around, it will go pretty good. And this little narrow foot on here really helps do these corners like this. That one. Uh, and lock that in. Beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna snip that off. Come around to this side and finish it up. And I need to really get another piece of tape on the other side over here so I can have my seam allowance but I can eyeball it too which is what I'm going to do Yeah, the narrow presser foot really helps I need to take it one on my my fat like this. I like it a lot. Inside out, or inside outside in, whatever you want to say. When it's inside out already, what do you call it, Jaron, when you turn it inside right? Oops, right side out? I don't know. There was a pin there. Let me make sure I got all the pins out. Trim all my threads off. So I measured this, and it's a little bit big. And so I'm going to take in um, like an eighth inch here, which will be a quarter inch, an eighth inch here, which will be another quarter inch, an eighth inch here, which will be another quarter inch for a total of three quarter inches. And then I think that that will be good for a 23 inch crown. Now, one of the things I need to do is 
when you're making like a 23 inch hat and you measure this you stretch this out but you don't want to stretch it you just want to kind of pull it so it's straight like that um, you don't want it to be exactly 23 inches or else it ends up being too small what you want to do is be like 23 and a half and give you a little bit of room so that when you're making the seams and that fabric is holding in that takes up a little bit extra room and then when you stitch on the headband on the inside that takes up a little bit of room and you don't want it to be too small where you end up having to put in you know a pleat or something or you don't want it to be too big you want it to be just right so let's take care of that so I'll just come in, I'll start in here and I'll start up about three inches away and then I'll come in and I'll take up like an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths I want it to be all lined up perfectly. And try that again. I'm going to go measure it now to make sure that it's about 23 and a half inches. I'm going to stretch it out like this. I'm going to make sure that, it's, that this measurement here is like, just so like 20, and it'll be 11 and some quarter or something like that. Eleven and three quarters. Okay, I got this where I want it. It's um when I stretch it out it's about eleven and three quarters, which is a little bit more than twenty-three. It's like twenty-three and a half, which is just what I want. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put a top stitch all the way around. I like to put my top stitches starting here and I bend the fabric to seam down here so that when I come around my top stitch ends up being on the top here, not on the bottom. I want, to, I want the top stitch to be on here so I need to start here and go all the way around. I just like that single needle top stitch. I think it looks really good. I don't have a double needle or bias tape so well, that's the way I like to do so let's see how this does it. One thing you have to do is you have to kind of pull it aside and make sure that this seam lays down so you can get a top stitch right through there and it'll go through that seam. So let's see how this does on this because now we're going to be going through a lot of fabric on those big thick seams. I think it'll do it though. Oh yeah, I just went through one. That was perfect. Just beautiful, really nice top stitch. I 
looking good. Next thing I'm going to sew up is this headband. Okay, I've got the hat band all sewn up, turned inside out, and now I'm going to sew it up. I've measured it so that this is 11 and a half from here to here, which is 23. Stitch that up. Okay, that's good and stitched up. Okay, so to quilt this top, which I'm going to do first before I put it, the darts in, and so it's the other thing is, this one I'm going to do at a, at a 45 degree angle. So I'll sew all the way around it, and then I'll start quilting it. And I'll do it upside down because the fleece doesn't like to get pulled by the dogs. So it would be better if it's on the bottom. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to go all the way around, and then I'll start doing the diagonals. More thread in, we're ready to continue. Yeah, that looks really nice. I'll trim all of the little pieces off, but that turned out looking really nice. I like that green thread against the back black there. Okay, when I sew this up, I'm going to put a pretty large seam allowance on it. Okay, 
And we're gonna sew up the, the crown piece here. And we're gonna we'll finish working on this later. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this to this, so I'll get it all pinned up and we'll sew it, sew it up. So one of the tricks I've learned to sewing up these hats, if you can see this, is I'll pin up the crown to the top of the liner. And this is the same way when I'm doing that, the shell. I'll, I'll pin it up here at the front and then I'll go to the back. I want the backs to be even. So I'll pin those up and then I'll start pinning it on either side, working my way up. And then I'll undo the front up here and even it out. And um, then I get everything pretty even. When I made this pattern, I really took a lot of care to measure along here on each side to make sure <clears throat> that it was going to match up well with the outside of the, the top part here. Alright, I'm ready to sew it up. I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to sew all the way around to here, and then I'll start back here and go that way. It's just, I think it's too hard to try to start it by you this. I'm going to flip it over and finish sewing it up. Because it's easier that way. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I made a bunch of these hats and I made them the first way, then I made them kind of the wrong way, but it's easier to control the, the fabric if the part that's pooching out is on top. I can't remember, I saw a video about that on YouTube and when I realized that and, and understood that we were talking about it, it made sense. So I need to make sure that I'm sewing it with the cap on top because that's the part that's going to pooch out and then I don't get puckers and little pleats in my fabric when I sew up those corners. So um, I'm going to start here on this side and work my way through there and just take my time so it's really done nicely. Hopefully you can see, I'll try to get that position right. It helps to having this narrow foot. One of the things I like about this reverse is I can lock it in place and use the hand wheel to do those first lock stitches. Get you one of these little magnetic rocks. Put it, in your, put it on the deck there, and then you can put your pins on that. It's really nice. Okay, so we're just gonna go slow. 
I'm going to increase the number of stitches so it'll go slower as I go through this. Just want to make sure that everything lays out right. This is the toughest part for me to get to make it look nice. I still get some little pleats and stuff in there, but I don't know any other way to do it. Leave it out and kind of stretch the fabric around a little bit. Do a few more. Around a little bit, try to get the least amount of those in there as possible. using my hand to spin this around. And it looks really nice to be able to do that. Okay. Alright, let's go back and do this side here. So, if I had started over there, I, can, I need to remember that. If I start over here, I can get those all the way around. So I'll come back over here where I start and finish this corner. done. I got bunching a little bit there, but that's not too bad. It's just the liner. I try to be more careful with the shell. But other than that, it looks pretty good. So it looks really cool. Okay, the next thing is um, I need to measure this and take in anything here, which I'm probably going to have to do, and take in some there and some there on that seam. I may take a little bit here, um, just put like a little dart in there to take up some there. And then I'll, I'll sew on the headband onto the liner. Then I'll get the bill put together and sew the bill onto the shell. And then the hat will be done. I'm ready for this fellow that gave this sewing machine to me. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small hem in this liner right here. Just like a, uh, a small quarter inch hem like that. Because when I put this on, I don't want this to show when I sew it on there, so I'll, um, I'll put a little hem all the way around and then I'll sew the headband onto the liner.
Ang Okay, I've got it all pinned up and you can see I pinned it down. That way when I sew the headband on to the shell, the um, liner isn't going to show through. And then what I'll do is I'll sew this all the way around down here so it'll have a stitch all the way down here, all the way around here. And uh, then I can put them together as one piece and that's the way I like to do it now. So on that side, here we go. So when I'm doing this, this is like a quarter inch from here to the needle. So for my stitch, I'll put this right down the center of this little piece and I'll use that for my guide. stitches in there. And away we go. big seam. Let's see how it does. Look at that. Not even a problem. I only had to help it a little bit. That's awesome. That's just amazing. And that was a lot of layers of fabric. Okay, and that part is done. Okay. Snip that off. Okay, now it's time to put the bill together. Okay, I cut out my my uh bill plastic and this is just cut out from um, uh, a planter bucket that I got from the nursery and washed it up and it makes really good bill material it's already curved and it's about the right thickness some is are more thick than others but um, it's made from HDPE plastic which is super durable it's never gonna rot and it makes perfect little bills. So I've cut that out, I've traced it around there just with a fabric marker so I can see where to go and I'll sew right along that line. Okay, I've got the bill 
in there. I've got it all pinned down and stretched out. I'm going to put a seam along, or well, not a seam, but a yeah, top stitch along here. And uh, what I found works really good is you put your finger in there and you can hold your finger there and it won't get hit by that. And I can just guide it along in there. So let's do that. See how it does going through this plastic. Maybe it's not going to do it. did it. That looks great. I just had to get some momentum going. Okay, I marked that up. I'll just pull this tight as I go around. Oh, we're good. start this way. Okay, I got two more steps to go. I need to put the bill on and and sew that onto the the shell, and then I need to sew the liner with the headband into the shell. So I'm gonna get this pinned up and make sure it's on there straight, and then I'll sew that in. Okay, so I'm ready. I got this pinned on and I'm ready to put the bill on. Now, I'm doing this on this machine for the sake of doing it on this machine. And I'll show you how to do it. I bet it's much easier to put on a machine that, um, like my Janome or my FAF, that has a foot that comes out that you can tuck things under and do sleeves and things like that. Because then you can just tuck this whole thing under the, there and it makes it really simple to do. But this, I've got to flatten everything down and get it underneath there and then sew it on. And so it just makes it difficult. Plus I want to get right up to that seam. So I'm, I've done this before. It's just a little bit trickier because you could probably do it like this and bend things back, but then you can't see where you're going. 
So I'm just going to bend this over, flatten things out, and get it started and be careful where I go. Let's see if I can get a good shot. started on this seat. I just got to make sure stuff does not get sewn into where I'm going. That's the tricky part is to keep everything out of the way as you can go around this corner. Okay. Looks like it's in the clear, so we're going to just take our time to go around here. Everything's looking good. Okay, that's done. Let's take a look. Looks oh, great. Okay, so I got the bill on there. It looks really good. I like the way that this one I'm getting this one so that when I stitch it on there, it'll be up really close to it. A little bit shorter of a bill. Putting this one so this bill is a little bit shorter. I've got two bill patterns one where the bill comes out about three quarters of an inch more, and then this one where I sew it on there so that it's just like a quarter inch away from there. And then this, this front piece will kind of uh, sit up like this and look really good. Okay, now I'm ready to put the liner in and I'm going to take my time and pin that all up and then sew that up. Okay, I've got my cap all pinned up. I got the liner pinned in there. And um, let's make a seam. We got some pretty thick seams here. It'll be a real test of this little machine to see how it does, how it goes through that. But uh, I think it'll do it just fine. So what I'll do is I'll start way over here on this side and I'll go all the way around and then I have to lay this cap down really flat like that and get as close to this edge as possible because it'll go all the way through to this side and it'll make just a little bit of a seam there which is okay because it gets hidden when I, when I stitch that down. But we're just about done with this fellow's hat. Plenty of thread. I changed the bobbin not too long ago, so I know I'm not going to run out of thread on here. And 
right. big hump right here. See how that goes. Needs a little bit of help other than that. It's doing really well. Make sure that's tucked all the way underneath there. done. Alright, the hat is complete except for stitching the bill to the shell. And I'll get that done and show you what it looks like when I'm finished. I finished up the cap for this fellow that gave me the senior 19 the Singer 1591 and let me just show you a little bit about it. So I made a patchwork top for it. This was made from a pattern that I modified. It's a 23 inch head size here. It has a really nice um, like polyester um, little silky fabric liner in it that's been quilted and uh, with some fleece underneath it so that it's really nice. Um, everything has a liner, um, not a liner, but an interfacing in it so that it gives the, the material more um, durability and um, just a better feel. But uh, it was a really nice bill on there. I, I took and I sewed the bill um, to, the, um, to the top, the, the outer, and uh, Better than that, I mean, it turned out really great, really nice cap, but it was fun sewing up on that 1948 Singer Model 1591. 
the, the sewing machine worked beautifully. All the stitching on it was really great, even where I had to go through a lot of fabric, like this little joint here where it was folded over, and you can see where everything kind of converged together there, but it still it handled it perfectly without any looping on the back or really any problems at all. Sometimes I had a little bit of struggle going through there and I had to help it along, but other than that, uh, the hat turned out beautiful and I, I hope it fits this fellow nicely and that he enjoys it for a long, long time. Anyways, thanks for joining me and happy sewing.